So thanks for the introduction. Um, just for first note, I have a few extra slides in this presentation. I don't know how much you are acquainted with the infrastructure, so I might skip over those if, if you are all already familiar. Otherwise, I may, ma might want to say a bit more so that we understand what we are talking about. So if you think uh, everything is already known, please just say so. But I see a few new, new faces, so I'm not sure if I should really should. So first of all, what is it? Wannabuild is a central auto building database we have in Debian. It keeps the track of, uh, of the state of packages. It merges new packages of FTP masters in uh, every 15 minutes, except during deinstall. It schedules packages for being built, can execute court bin and MU requests, and so on. And it has a web interface uh, that you might have already run across. Then we have it's a, it's a build daemon itself. That's a daemon that runs on the auto build uh, machine itself. It connects to one build. It starts pa building packages. Um, and they are, let's say, similar to the ones we, we already have in the Debian archive. More on that later. Um, and why do we need it? Because that's the only way we can make sure our packages are built in a timely manner on all architectures. And if we have a delay li like half a day, that's just to be expected because sometimes build is uh, busy with things like, oh yes, two different GTC versions just were uploaded, plus one open office org, plus one security update of the kernel, and that may have some, yeah, t uh, may waste some time. And we have an, a shared rep responsibility for success successful building. It's both with maintainers and porters. And if it fails to build, the usual way is uh, find out why. You, there are porters change routes, uploads the source, uh, fix source packages to unstable and be happy. So now that's the life cycle what happens. A source package gets uploaded to FTP master, then it's sooner or later accepted into the archive. Then one build uh, gets pushed uh, as the index files, and index files are just the same that everybody has. So it's a packages file and the sources file. Um, then it, it merges them. It sees, okay, here's a package in a source file that's not been built yet on that architecture. It marks the package as needs built. Then the build team pick, uh, picks the package up. Then it, it gets eventually be built. Then it's marked so, it's uploaded, and at the end it's installed F at FTP master. And then one build says, oh yes, we found out now it's installed, and then it's put to the state, uh, state of installed. And then of course again, the next source version package uh, is uploaded some days later, and it all begins again. Um, we might have a few uh, problems there. So in some case, uh, cases, the auto builder cannot set up the change properly, in which case the package is just given back. If it fails to build, the package is, mar is marked as failed, which means it can't be auto built. Um, sometimes packages disappear and reappear in the needs build list. That might be because of a given backup buff or because of automatic uh, build dependency checking um, and there are some interesting things going on. And a, a full build log is always available on the, on the build team Debian org website, except for security builds. Um, so if you have an issue or don't know what went wrong, Please check there, and there should be a full build available for your package. So, where do we build? We used to do that mostly in, change, uh, in, in clone change suits via LVM. Now we use TAR. We do auto audition of experimental backports, whatever sources lines, if necessary, by a, by a script, which helps us quite a lot. And the change that always contains the main and concept binary packages, but doesn't contain the, uh, the non-free binary packages, independent of if, if we build for main concept or non-free. I mean, that's a very important thing to know because we got a lot of complaints about why does this non-free dependency not work because we don't have non-free de uh, binary dependencies working. Um, we do auto-sign it. I mean, that's, um, yeah, that's just uh, working now these days. Um, we have package arch, arch specific, basically saying um, we don't want to um, build a package on this architectures. We now, we these days, uh, mostly po uh, pass a source package description, but we still can, we still have the manual list and we still use it. So, a bit more about our infrastructure. I already said about the website. We have Wanna Build which is on Greek Debian org, where every developer could access it, and it's in a Git archive where everybody could access it. We have build D and S build. As I said before, we are, have a few um, differences to the packages in Debian. They are stored in a common, uh, in a common Git um, repository. However, 
we live on the branch build the uh, O64, and we currently have 18 um, specific patches relative to the Debian package. Um, more, uh, mostly uh, sm small things like, oh yes, um, the FTP master's location for this and that just has been changed. Uh, sometimes a bit, a bit larger ones, because our most important goal is this thing runs 7.24. So what did we do for VC? We, we upgraded the upstream version 0.64 as basis for our own version um, and had some, uh, yeah, and need to do some adjustments there. Um, then we noticed that LVM snapshots are now broken in VC. Um, this is a bug report, this is a not Debian specific feature. If you, uh, if you, if you search in around in the archive you or in the bug report, you will see that there are reports from Fedora, Red Hat, uh, SUSE and so on. Um, so just as an interesting way, LVM sna snapshots sometimes are broken. Broken just means that if the, if you, uh, that somehow the, the mixture between LVM and UDEV um, uh, makes it impossible for the LVM comments to run. Which means if you start them, they will just freeze. And the only way to escape that is the booting your system. Um, this didn't make us really happy. Um, so depending on the architecture, EA64 is really good because it's fast in detecting such things. We need less than one day to, uh, to reproduce it on EA64 in every case. Other architectures needed days for it. So even fa other fast ones like AMD64 um, doesn't get as good as broken as EA64. Um, but it ev eventually will also get broken. S uh, then we tried BTLFS and it's other uh, ways broken. It's uh, on EA64 it, it uh, even doesn't survive one build, whereas LVM at least usually uh, does something like three to five builds. Um, so now we switched to tar-based change routes and we adjusted a few extended four options. Um, I mean, if you, if you, if you love the data, don't use those, but if you don't, uh, they are very good. Because it, 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 it more or less converts extended four file system to a uh, to a te uh, to a tem temp FS file system, which is good for build speed. And then we noticed that on Spark, we can't run the stable kernels because the stable kernels will just uh, we crash the system in another interesting way and we need to run old stable, stable kernels. So our current Spark build is run with old stable kernels, which does not um, uh, only make this DSA not happy, but, uh, but also not us. So this was a fa fast uh, so build in, in our recent uh, things. I mean, this is rather above, so that's a dis more or less a discussion base. I just wanted to give some common points to start. Now, discussions, uh, suggestions, Whatever. Above is your place. <laughs> I'll start. Yeah, this one. I'll start the, the ball rolling uh, with uh, multi arch on build these. What do you mean with multi arch build these? Um, being able to say first that you have a build dependency. Say you're building on the MD64, but you need an i386 package to build. Is there any chance we could get that? Oh, we yes, there's there's of course, there's a quite easy chance. Send working patches. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> but, uh, just on the principle kind of thing. On the I, I mean, I, I see a few other uh, builty people here in the room as well, so please feel free to speak about that. But my gut feeling is that I don't yet see how we could integrate that in a way that doesn't make it overly complex. This do doesn't mean I'm, I, I'm opposed to it, but I would like to see a concept in patches first. Um, yeah, we've we've been pretty leery about turning that on Ubuntu, even though we've uh, our MD64 systems by default uh, for users use MD, uh, use i386, uh, which I think Debian should as well. But the um, uh, we've been pretty nervous about turning that on buildies just because we didn't want to run into we didn't really want to run into bugs with. Um, uh, Packages accidentally being chosen from the wrong architecture or something, and uh, if you know if if a dev package is installable in your native architecture but not in the not in a foreign architecture, sorry, vice versa. If it's uninstallable in your native architecture but installable in the foreign architecture, then uh, it's conceivable that apt would decide to install it. It's probably mine. 
so it's, it's conceivable that apt could install the foreign one instead which uh, would be quite scary so i i think i'd like to see this somehow turned on only for selected packages maybe yes that's what i was also just thinking that if we say we need this kind of pa this package we have an let's say an adjusted so uh, packages list and uh, adjusted app preferences which just allows the package we actually need and be in so uh, basically even uh, already on a vulnerability level we have a sensor file where say for this package it's okay to co consider exactly these packages or they would just say in case with explicit dependencies it's, it's okay and other not but I fail a bit to see the, uh, or the, the, the basic code will be written to support it in a way that doesn't break on every occasion. Yeah, we, uh, it sort of strikes me that we'd end up with something like packages aren't specific or something. I don't want, uh, I want, an, I want Rasa to automate it a bit more because package are specific really is, um, is oh, I, aging I, I, other ways. I, 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 don't mean, I don't mean that in particular, but I mean uh, something that allows you to do package specific configuration for multi-arch perhaps. Yes, and the, pa and the configuration actually should be in the source file, in the, in the DSC. So I'm very interested in this as well. I want to build the cross compilers that way. <laughs> and it all works if you just do it on a machine. So the question is, how do we enable that and build it? As you say, a specific, you know, we could be quite specific about a fairly small set of packages we do it for. We could have a, a special buildy with this enabled. Do we have, do we have kind of preferential? No, no, it's not about special We could do something like XS auto builds uh, that we use for non-free, but we could have XS multi-arch. And um, technically, it's we, we just create new ch new change loads on every time. So I don't actually I don't mind what happens in the change load as long as the build set is is, is going to happen um, is working because we saw always the change load afterwards. Anyways, I mean I think we have still two machines left without with no um, clone change loads, and they just won't do it, and it's not an issue. I mean those machines also don't uh, build non-free, uh, they don't build uh, experimental. Um, yeah, so throwing away change loads is something we are now really good with. I yeah, because for me, like, I build depend on GCC multilib, so I'm building on any architecture for 32-bit packages, and I can declare my dependencies which work in i386 shrewd, but they don't when somebody accidentally builds on AMD64 without installing. Uh, perhaps some interesting note on that, right, just... Um, we are, we are, just a second, we are what you should be aware is that in the last year we mostly switched to, or we have now lots of buildies which build more than one architecture. So we have, for example, an EC86 and AMD64 change route on the same piece of hardware, which is quite helpful, but um, might run us and a couple of other things because we, I think we have only one EC86 buildy left which doesn't run an AMD64 kernel. Yeah, I mean, multi-lib is a, the, the whole bi-arch system is okay for some cases, but it's really not, it's really not terribly scalable, yeah. to, it's particularly not to the kind of things Wookie is doing. Yeah, I, mean, I think this is a dog-fooding issue. We're expecting people to build stuff this way for various purposes where it's necessary or sensible, and I think we should try and use it in our infrastructure as well. So I guess maybe a few of us need to sit down and thrash this out um, Yeah, that, later. Would, that would so be a great thing, actually. I think that the, the answer to the question is... Yes, in principle, but we need to work out how we're going to do it without breaking <laughs> things. And, and, and one really important piece in build is really they run most of the time uh, not being actively watched. Um, whatever they do, they just take the final binary package, sign it, and ship it into the FTP master. So we need to be pretty sure that whatever we do, I mean, it shouldn't break anything, but if it breaks, the package uh, must not be installed. So the result needs to be a failure. Uh, but if we pile up two days of failure, build failures, um, we will have a very hard time by our users. So um, build design really in something you want, shouldn't mess uh, with unnecessarily. This is always a bit, uh, yeah... It, it, it's, a, it's a not so visible part of our infrastructure, but users can start very fast complaining if there are no AMD64 auto builders, for example. So I think there's another, another one by Colin. <laughs> I think we have two microphones here anyway, so. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, we're <laughs> chucking them about a bit. Um, the, the other kind of multi arch related thing is, um, and I guess this isn't really a question, but a request for help. Um, uh, the uh, things like. Uh, cool and any annotations on build dependencies. Uh, I sent a stack of patches a while back to get some of that working on uh, in S build and in 
uh, I think to some extent on the Buildy branch of SBuild, but I'm not desperately sure about what's the uh, about exactly which uh, configuration is being used on the on build machines. So it's uh, it's slightly hard to work out what what I need to backport. Uh, could I work with somebody here? Uh, to sure. Let's who do it after has access to sort that out. Um, yes. Let's do that afterwards, but uh, but f uh, as a general generic mark, we run the configuration from the build do 64 branch, and we sometimes cherry pick uh, branches from the master cherry uh, uh, pick packages from the master branch. Right. Um, but if we think something is relevant for us, we just apply it in our branch, and so all the patches from us are cherry picked to the master branch. Right. The um uh, I think in I think there is also an issue about having a suitable version of Deepkage Dev. I think we have some I the the Buildy branch has some uh, uh, has its own fork of bits of the Deepkage modules. I think from mm. uh, from libdeepkage Perl. I um, don't or think at least so used to. Well, actually, in th in the Buildy branch or in, in the Skits repository, there is an there is an let's say, in, um, another version of Vulnerability included, which we don't use. So I'm, I'm not sure which tools are yeah, there, I but I, I, I never cared. I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of there, there are a few things that SBuild uses for parsing uh, dependencies. Um, which, we uh, we, uh, we, we, we have, have gotten rid of that. Right, you have, uh, but I can't. The, the thing that we would need to check is whether Wheezy's Deepkage is good enough and whether we might need to reintroduce those um, or reintroduce those forks in order to be able to parse colon any and colon net of build dependencies? Um, the current situation of parsing build dependencies is as, is as follows. For the um, non-overlay distributions, that means, for example, unstable, um, we use apt to do that. Mm -hmm. For the overlay distributions, for example, experimental, we, uh, we, we, we um, make an, an, an filtered package uh, which contains just everything from the depends line, which is relevant for that architecture. Then we install, then we just install the package via dpackage, and then, then, we, then we say to aptitude, and now we'll solve the mess, please. Sure, sure. Um, okay, well we can we can have a look and see if we, we can. can yeah. <laughs> uh, just one thing, I was reading over the bug report about the uh, LVM snapshot issue. Yeah. And this Monday, somebody sent an email that he backported LVM from unstable, and that that fixed the issue for him. So that might oh. actually be good news. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, we probably need to re uh, uh, in ah. investigate in detail, but it looks good. Well, I, I would now I would say for the, for the build, I think we have a working solution. However, well as I'm a, as, as one, a one I'm very, very unhappy with. Well, uh, an, but anyways, as a Debian developer, I think if we have found a fix for that issue, we need, to, uh, we need to make sure it's available and stable. So that's not a question. That's, that's what I'm saying, yeah. I'm pretty sure the answer to Colin's question about any and native is that the Wheezy version of dpackage does have what we need. I think it's right. I think it's nearly okay. Uh, okay. Okay, I just think we should, we, we should check. And what we usually do when we start breaking code is that we take one build D, uh, just to stick it to experimental and um, break experimental trust, uh, which is not as bad as breaking unstable. <laughs> That's that's fine, except when you're doing things that depend on the differences between the resolvers that you're using for unstable and experimental. Uh, so I'm not convinced that building for experimental would actually be a good, a correct test of this, um, uh, because of what you just described. Um, uh, yeah, well, in but, uh, I, I have yeah, a few yeah, ideas <laughs> how we could even try that in experimental. Well, or, or, or we could just we could just run things through unstable buildies, but throw away the yeah. results or, or something. A similar thing. So I, m I mean, we have different levels of testing depending on what we change. There's not a one uh, process that's telling this is the way to accept new changes in. Um, some changes are pretty obvious, and we just throw them out everywhere, and uh, we haven't had to uh, made a mistake too often with that. Um, yeah. We have we have one other parser of this in Edo's step check. To, to do the checking of that it's installable before it goes to the build is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that supports it or not. Yeah. <coughs> Which is now superseded by libdos. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all being... We are we using that a lot for our analysis? But I don't quite know how it works with... Uh, Yes, I, if I could just explain how the how the how the checking of the solubility works. What we do is we generate a, f a fake packages file um, 
äh, in seinen Trail just what in this package files installable. Uh, as we are speaking about source packages, it contains packages starting with, with source minus 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 package name or with step minus 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 package name to check for the manual set uh, dependencies. But yes, in the, in the end, it's just an, uh, a, package, a file that looks like a normal Debian packages file and where we want to have the files, what of them is installable and what not. Um, and also we have a, a small patch in. Uh, we assume that build essential is always uh, uh, installable, so we have a packages file with build is, uh, essential without any dependencies, because otherwise uh, if you re-upload parts of that, um, the build is just say, oh yeah, now no nothing is installable anymore, I will quit working. Um, but usually build essential is al al already installed in the change root, so it wouldn't make sense. I've got something completely different on the wannabe on the wanna build side of things. Uh, now we've got built using, uh, and one thing I'd like to see, but that's it means uh, probably changes to policy is automatic bin enemies on packages that declare built using when their built used stuff changes. Like for instance, I I've got um, well I I maintain the Windows cross compiler stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've got bin utils for MinGW, GCC for MinGW, and so on. And they are built using whichever version of bin utils was in at the time they got built, and GCC and so on. And something that would be very nice for me is if whenever bin utils changed or GCC changed, my packages got rebuilt as well. I I have I have two different answers on that. So the so one is I'm a bit unhappy because it would mean that. We get a. Um, I expect that we'll soon get a very high increased list of usage, where no, actually nobody cares why that is the case because we ever maintain it's just a little change. So we need to have some control over what happens there. Otherwise, it's not only that the builders get unhappy, but that the other maintainers get unhappy as well because we are just using too much power for such uh, the builds. The other part of the answer is that actually it's a question of. How, wh which binary packages needs to be the build in order to get the archive into a working state is a topic which is handled mostly by the release team these days. So, um, yeah, I think uh, so. If, if uh, or basically, what I think is, if you have an, if you have good reasons to do that or not, um, I would try, uh, try to start technical dis uh, discussion and send pointers to the Debian release and the Wanna build uh, team mailing list. But the word pointers was explicitly in that sentence because these don't include the lists on the discussion. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's, what the outcome will be. I mean, technically, it would be probably possible and uh, perhaps even less hard than the previous uh, subject, but I'm not convinced it's a good idea. I'd like to see some improved documentation. I'd like to see some improved documentation on how to set up the buildy. So there are these two configuration files, and for one, uh, it's a mess with the email addresses when you put in the email address with a slash before the add or not. Changes in every configuration line. I couldn't figure out how to run two buildies or two builds in parallel. Not and possible. The, and the okay. <laughs> well, it that was a short answer. It says it says somehow in the in the config. I'll, it yes. Uh, um, that was never working, and then we removed it. And then the, the global timeouts. There's no example in the, in the package how to set global timeouts. Um, uh, okay. And that uh, used to be possible when I did this four years ago. Uh, I, okay, I have a few different answers on that. Um, yes, uh, so, so I mean, for a few things, there might be, uh, let's say, documentation improvements possible. However, I mean, we now really speaking about build DNS build has two different branches. And for the branch we maintain, I would say our goal is to document it in a way that it's possible to set it up in, a, in the same way as, as it is set up on a Debian system. But um, so what we have done, uh, or what, what, we, what we tried, uh, tried in the last years multiple times was to move configuration from the, from the build itself to, the, to Wanna build because it's, it's easier to configure that for all systems. 
so the, for example, in the season changes, um, or you know, these days you can run uh, as built without a uh, .s build rc configuration file, which wasn't possible up to now because you don't, there's nothing you need to set there anymore. We just moved everything from .s build to .build rc, and from there we could move it to wanna build, and then be done. Oh, you should add to, to, to dot build the yes, you could. Yeah, but I cannot add it to one of them. Yeah, um, you're right. We should probably have some documentation what uh, uh, to get an, let's say, uh, similar result. As I said before, I'm interested in providing a documentation that allows the maintainers to understand how it works, so to get, and to get similar results at home. Uh, if you if you need my GSOC student last year wrote a documentation on the wiki. It is not perfect, and you probably already all know that. But uh, it is a tutorial from beginner to uh, having a first uh, build the running. Um, and by the way, what what you just said is, is yeah, 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 I know that. But some other people might be interested. Yeah. To uh, know that things there is have a documentation changed on the wiki. since the last one build is four years ago, and I had them working, and now lots of things have changed. Yes, well, one, one, one really, I think, one another important piece of uh, information is any dev developer could, could speak with one build system, so one build is no longer restricted to a certain group, you just can't update it. So if you want to see what a, what a build gets from one build, you can just ask one build the same way a build does. Just a build will refuse to, ma to make any writes to it, but you can, you can read and read, and, and taking a package, the first part of taking a package is tell me which packages are available and you could do that. And, and Wanna build has a minus minus simulate flag. If you set set, you can even make a take on it, and it will just give you the same output as the build it gets, but it doesn't change the database internally. So you could do that every all the time if you want. This is also a new feature in Wanna build I like very much, and it helps debugging issues because you can just run a build D with minus minus simulate and throw away the outcome, and nothing will uh, be broken, anyways. I'm sorry, I'm a bit late. Maybe this question is answered already. But I've noticed there seems to be a certain amount of pain with setting up new change routes when things need to get done. And when requesting such, it, it seems to take a long time until it actually happens. And I wonder if there's anything that can be done to reduce this pain on all involved sides. Yes, um, now let's see where we are. I think I need this slide. Uh, <laughs> so yes, um, we, have, we have a very good working script to set up change routes uh, with LVM. However, we don't do it anymore because LVM is broken. So uh, just, uh, Wouter just said that there is an, that seems to be a fix for that bug. If so, we should of course upload it to, uh, to stable. Oh, we should first test this and then upload it to stable, as always. Um, and the other is, uh, our scripts might need some adjustment for the tar-based changes we need to use these days. So basically what we just did, when we noticed that bug, we did in some emergency kind of operations, the, um, convert enough changes to so tar-based so our build is still work, but because we don't have a nice script to set that up. So if, if, if anybody wants to fix the script, and the script is in our build branch in, e in, ET uh, um, in I think, ETC uh, uh, set up change to the SH or so, um, then we, I would really like to, uh, uh, to see that. And that was, would be really useful for, uh, for, for us as well. Actually, can I just, let's just stick this in now? So we have a general problem that it's hard to set up buildies, and there's, there's actually two parts to this. There's setting it up like Debian does, which is kind of relatively well dealt with, but there's a whole lot of other cases where lots of people, either being um, derived distros or people who just want to rebuild their packages over and over again for continuous integration, mm -hmm. all of that's too hard, and we need to do... There's quite a lot of tools. There's rebuild D, there's the new PyBit thing, there's the other build D we don't use that Roger does, um, and we start have we fixed the initializing the database problem? Is that... Okay, so work, work is ongoing on that. Is that where we're at? Well, actually, I, I would really be happy if somebody who, uh, would interact with uh, the with, uh, build the, uh, maintainers list, or there's a mailing list about the Wanna build admins, Wanna build team uh, list, 
if somebody would be on that list who take who, who has an interest in making the, the build is documented for others and um, submitting patches uh, on that effect, I would really be happy to accept them. But um, the amount of patches on that topic that I could write in my own time is uh, a bit limited. Yeah. Uh, but I think now your question, uh, Ronda, was rather about uh, why the build the maintenance takes so long. Is it takes so long because we have lost our automation recently? which is actually really bad news for all of us involved. It used to be better. And on the other hand, um, we shouldn't add new build, uh, uh, or basically we should just add new change to the ones in the cycle, and that is directly after stable releases, after the words just upgrade. Um, but all of these things are um, currently not in the same state I would be happy to. Um, uh, yes, there are a few other options, uh, but none necessarily appealing, and there's no code for, for any of them. Um, this is currently a rather a sad part of it. I'm Helmut, and I would like to discuss the issue of debuggability of failing builds. Uh, as the main one of the maintainers of the Doxygen package, I'm experiencing a few Heisen bugs, which means the build is failing, and the easiest solution is to just give it back, and it works. So uh, that makes debugging the build almost impossible. Debugging reassigned bugs almost impossible, and uh, I was thinking about some options to fix that. Uh, mm -hmm. One nice thing to have would be obtaining core dumps from build these, so I could I in investigate the situation after the fact that it failed. Mm -hmm. uh, while discussing this with a few other people, uh, a, f a few other ideas uh, came up. So if a build fails during configure, it might make sense to save the config log. And if a build fails with uh, an internal compile error from GCC, it usually tries to build the file twice. And if the failure is reproducible, uh, it saves the pre-processed uh, C source and a temp file location uh, to investigate further. Uh, so uh, I was I would like to ask the question, what kinds of artifacts can we save from failing builds to make it easier to debug them, and how can we achieve that? Yeah, well, now I will, I will just start with another part of the answer. We used to have a situation where we just deleted uh, directories of success, uh, successful builds, and we kept cells of failed builds around, but that meant that after a few days uh, so we ran out of space and we just deleted them anyways. Um, in addition to that, I, I'm, I said I've, I've, I've said it's, it's a bit unfortunate, but most maintainers don't care enough. So I, I see it's just, I, I'm happy to see somebody caring about it, um, but that's why we are at the current situation. So my question is really, I mean, I'm happy to just share everything which is a build directory with appropriate maintainers. Um, but my question is just how to make it work in a way that the maintainers can easily access the data, and that, we, uh, and that our disks don't get too full. So the main problem why you run out of space is because you use throwaway shroots, and you need to throw away the entire shroot, which takes a lot more space than if you use non-throwaway shroots, and you just need to keep the build uh, directory. Uh, um, no, that's yeah, yeah, actually, uh, in my experience, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think it is. I mean, basically, oh. if, if, if you use a throwaway shroot in an LVM snapshot, you use five gigs per build, period. <laughs> We, we, uh, we, we, are, we are deleting the, the, the build, so basically the build is, is unpacked in, the, in slash build uh, right. uh, and we just uh, and we remove the directory in that one. And I think if we keep the build, or if we would keep the artifacts in the build directory, this would be helpful for, for your case. But, I'm, uh, um, but we, we have seen that we, um, that we run out of in, in, in that directory as well um, because if we have a few large packages being failed, and so, so somehow something we need to do, like you can recover the artifacts something like three days after builds and afterwards they are gone. That would be an option. And then think of how to reduce it. But yeah, something like that, we need to think about how we can do it in a way that it works and how we can easily get them. I mean, when you get a compiler internal error, the pre purchase 
the artifact in question is not really large because we don't actually want the whole build tree with all the artifacts. We just want the pre-processed source code which was generated by GCC when it got the compiler error. That can be like five or seven megabytes big, but it's just one file. Yeah, if, if, if we have a good way to find it out, I'm happy yes, to accept it the prints patch. Yes, it, it prints where the file is. You patch uh, patch, the patch will be accepted. Right. <laughs> Is this <laughs> is this S build patches based? Is S build that has the functionality yes, of keeping it, components? Yes, it, it would need to be an S build. Right. So yeah. Uh, so um, the suggestion to just save the build directory doesn't work for me uh, because currently we don't save core dumps at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so I need enabling core dumping on build this. It's not a common problem, but it happens occasionally. And uh, maybe saving the build directory for one week or like that for maintainers to uh, spot uh, the errors. So uh, they can just fetch it in that time. And if they fail to do that, they'll have to rebuild or like that. So these bugs keep popping up over and over again. And mm -hmm. just catching a few of them would be great for me. Um, I really think we should discuss, uh, uh, we have all seen the, the 10 minutes um, uh, slide uh, uh, three minutes ago, so I think we should discuss about how, what we could do afterwards on some occasions. But as, yes, it, it definitely sounds sensible to me to do something there. I just don't know what the right answer will be. Uh, I've got a question. Uh, do you have any plan to make Debian port official? For now, it's quite hard to get a new architecture into this service, and, uh, and uh, Aurelian doesn't have too much time anymore. The very easy answer was, I can't remember that we any that the refused to, uh, put on, uh, to put any architecture into, in the, into our Warner build in the last uh, eight years. That means basically, since we have this, the, the new setup, uh, with databases, which was done uh, quite a few years ago, we don't have these large issues, but I think Phil wants to uh, give an answer. So it's better. Please. Is that really a problem? I mean, if you need a new architecture in the Warner build on Debian parts, you can also ping me. I mean, that's what I did. So if I did database changes on the main Warner build, I replicated them. We've got a bit of a... We currently only run architectures that are in the main archive on the main machine also. I mean, we need a lot of time of those 15 minutes currently to do all the processing. Yeah, well, if, if there are multiple main, uh, or there ought to be multiple maintainers of Debian ports. Yeah, but I had a feeling that only Aurelien was taking care of that. I wasn't aware you were in um, also involved in that. Yeah. So I contacted Aurelien. He told me, no, the build port, the Debian port is already uh, overloaded, and we cannot add a new architecture inside. That's another problem because we only have a VM of DSA that's also like underpowered. Okay. I think we need to speak about this DSA anyway. Yeah, it's a another venue because it <laughs> the way it's done, it's not main Debian. Right. Uh, okay. So uh, currently, I mean, that's, that's true for both the Debian one build and the po uh, Debian ports one build. Um, both are very uh, CPU intense. Um, so the, the one build machine, um, even if I said it's, it isn't as bad as it used to be with the uh, Berkeley databases, which just uh, were easy to break uh, with lead operations. Um, we still use to have a very high average load because the every 15 minutes we compare all the files, process data, make the either things. So from the 15 minutes from FTP master push to FTP master push, I think we currently use 10 of the 15 minutes to run scripts, uh, eight ways parallel. So, um, yeah, uh, so I need to start a new port right now and I just asked Aurelien and he said you need to do these things um, and uh, that seems to be going okay. but. Um, we have to have a good mechanism for introducing new ports and uh, maybe so either we need to give more resources to ports.net or we should bring it more in-house um, and maybe that's easier to do now with David. I must admit to not understanding how all this works but uh, I guess it's probably more productive to talk in a smaller thing yeah. about exactly I, 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 what I, I, we should I, I, do. I, I think but what yeah, we, we need to think to a bit more about that, how we could make better use or how we could share resources better uh, or whatever is sensible but uh, I think we all agree that it needs to be easy to start a new port, um, but whatever that means in the, end, uh, in, in the result um, needs a bit more discussion, and now we have five minutes. So that means one to two questions are left, if any. Okay, we managed to shut everyone up. <laughs>
I saw Holger pass by. Uh, one of the things I would like to ask is, would it be conceivable to find a way to run things like pew parts on idle builties? Because we don't have test machines for the non, non uh, for some architectures. Um, I don't think I would be happy with that. Um, basically, I mean, what 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 I expect is that we get um, that we get a personal archive soon um, by a by FTP master, and then I assume we won't have uh, any free times. So currently, our goal is to say we we uh, we uh, build packages in unstable quite fast. And we, uh, we eventually build experimental, but we have enough architectures which, uh, which only have a limited amount of spare time. And I'm also not sure how the pure parts setup is compatible with the other setup. Uh, I mean, if I'm sure that the pure parts spots is not running too long, um, but from, the, from my gut feeling, I'm, I'm not really sure I'm happy. But perhaps it might change if I get shown that it works very well. Next and last, or don't we have a last question? Okay, in, in, in that case, I would just say thank you very much all for joining, for your questions, for the discussion, and I think there are f a few more things we need to discuss on the remaining DEPCONF days. Thank you. <laughs>